Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to part two of reacting to the V Premium ban list. This time, as of March 11th, 2022, we now have a separate ban list from Japan, which is wild because this is the first time in a really long time that we've had a different ban list than Japan. So let's just kind of go over real quick the most obvious changes, which are Bermuda Triangle and Shadow Paladin shown here. So we have choice restrictions between Ellie, Rosa, and Cutery for Bermuda Triangle, and Nemin, Charon, and Luard for Shadow Paladin. So I'm just going to quickly talk about the newer changes uh, compared to the older ones that we've seen in the past, just to kind of get those out of the way first, and then we'll go back and talk about the restrictions that Japan also has. So this is, as of right now, these are the English only B premium restrictions. So starting off with Shadow Paladin, Dragheart Luard, Black Sage Karen, and Skull Witch Nemin. So the main thing with these is that they're all kind of revolved around the fact that Luard has a lot of access to um, toolboxing, and that's why originally Nemin and Luard were already choice restricted. Adding Charon to the list is really interesting now, because before Luard and Karen were great because you would search out Karen, get a counter charge, and you would be able to recycle Karen from the drop zone back into the deck. So what Black Sage Karen does is when it's called by a card ability, you Soul Blast one, you counter charge one, and it gets 3k. So it's a 11k booster, gets you your resources back, and it helps you kind of fuel like resources for uh, Drag Driver Luard. So that's kind of like the main deal of why Karen was added to this choice restriction list. Um, the main thing that's really funny about this is that you now can't run a Shadow Paladin deck with Nemin and Karen in the same deck anymore. Like if you wanted to play Claret Sword or something. Um, so what does this mean for Luard? For this, it means obviously the big thing, like I mentioned before, no more counter charge engine. So, and because of that now, there's a lot of grade one space to fill in the deck. Obviously you can just fill it up with like Black Wing Swordbreaker if you want. Um, or other like Shadow Paladin cards that were teched at like two or three. But now there's that kind of like little game that Shadow Paladin players or Luard players have to play where they figure out what's the most effective way to use the Counter Blast without just kind of spamming it and also like making the best use of those in the multi attacking as well. So I feel like it is a pretty big nerf, not like the biggest thing in the world, but it is pretty significant for Luard it kind of slows them down a bit, which is going to make an impact. So enough about Luar, let's go ahead and talk about Premier Triangle. Choice restriction is between Ellie, Rosa, and Cutery. So Ellie's skill is basically that um, when it's placed in the guard circle, you buy another Ellie uh, from your drop, and you get to add shield to the end of the battle. So it's basically like kind of like an additional PG in your deck because of like the fact that you're getting more shield value out of it. And the fact that it's kind of really splashable in almost every Bermuda Triangle deck. So it's, you know, obviously they what they want to do is they want to make it harder for people to run Ellie in the deck with other like high, you know, producing resources or basically they want to like just stop people from Prism in running Prism running Ellie. So speaking of Prism, I'm going to talk about Rosa really quickly. Rosa's skill is basically when it's placed, you look at seven cards, search for a Prism, um, put it in your hand, and then you shuffle your deck. So it's like really simple, just on place, kind of last search for one. And when it's placed from your hand, um, all of you units with Prism in the name get an extra 10k. Uh, so that kind of just speaks for itself because it combos off with Vert when you call it with Vert more power so i think rosa and ellie is just kind of more about nerfing prism for the most part uh going on to cutery uh cutery is more like a highlander card it's when it's placed you declare a name of a card and you keep revealing the top card of your deck until you find the card that you're looking for and then you just add it to your hand shuffle your deck so you could literally just it's might as well just be a toolbox card um but it's like kind of like revealing, you just keep revealing cards. So I feel like what you would just use this card to search for Ellie, uh, that just kind of makes sense what I would really be doing, uh, or search for Rosa, that's another thing, but you can basically search any card. So I feel like 
they don't want you running cutery um, in the same deck that you're going to be searching out with Ellie or in the same deck as prisons, prisms. Um, that seems to be my understanding of what the whole like choice restriction between the three for Bermudas are. There's definitely way better Bermuda Triangle like um, enthusiasts out there that kind of have a better understanding of what this combo is about. But that's what it seems like from my perspective looking at this choice restriction. Uh, going back to what we had for Japan's list, this still applies towards English. So we're just kind of revisiting this. I already talked about this in a previous video about why was Percival limited to one, and it still is in English, so unfortunate. Starting off, we have Hamiel. So Hamiel is the finisher for Gavriel when it attacks. Chemist 3, till the end of battle, it gets 15k in a crit, and your opponent can't call Sentinels. And at the end of the battle, it goes to Soul. So it's like your big, fat, like, finisher, right? And it was a way that it kind of kept up against Prisms and Luard. But because Prism and Luard got nerfed, they're nerfing Gavriel too. So um, it sucks that Gavriel kind of got their finisher wiped out and it's going to be hard for them to come back. But we'll see how it plays out. Next is Meep. Meep is another Bermuda Triangle card, but it's now limited to one copy. It's a melody support. It's if you are uh, if you and your opponent's Vanguard are the same grade, you Soul Blast 1. Um, but other than that, you cannot Blast 1. You look at 7 cards from the top of your deck. Uh, look for two cards of melody. You put one in your hand and put the other one in your soul. Shuffle your deck. So filtering. Pretty obvious there. You're just searching for melody cards and kind of filtering through your deck. Deck thinning. So having the just one copy means you can't like be super aggressive when you're calling it from your hand. You know, during the melody like combos, just to kind of help you filter out for triggers, stuff like that. So now it's only one. Obviously, Bermuda has their way of bouncing cards and calling them back. It doesn't say you can only use this effect once per turn, so you can kind of repeat it over and over if you want to play around that. But I feel like restricting it to one, meaning you have less of a chance to see it, so it won't happen as often. I feel like that was the main issue. They're trying to make it so that you can't just like call it immediately and then just start filtering really quickly. Um, especially because it's just if you're, you and your opponent have the same grade. So if your opponent went first and you're writing the grade two, you just boom, call, soul blast, etc. So I think it's definitely to slow down the melody deck. So moving on to Gold Paladin. Uh, Bluish Flame Liberator Percival has been restricted to one copy in the deck. This is really sad because I feel like the only deck that was affected by Percival's prevence presence in a really unhealthy way was Gurgit. Um, that's just my personal opinion. I know people feel that Duke and Aggravain, uh, looking at the WGP results, had a lot of presence and it made Duke really busted. I guess you could argue that compared to everything else we had. So fair, Percival's to one. I get it. But I feel like it really made a lot of the other like underwhelming Gold Paladin decks like Prominence Core just kind of unplayable. Which is sad. I, I wish they would have at least made it so that Percival is still a four of in core, but any other great deck with other grade threes, a one. But you know, this is a temp. I hope this is temporary. <laughs> so Percival's to one. Percival's to one because it helps you generate Excel markers, and Excel two means you draw cards, and then also it searches out Aglavail, which is a really good grade two staple for Gold Paladin decks. So. You know, already pretty busted, and it says you can only use the card effect once per turn. Now it's basically once per game since you call the one copy and it's done, it's a vanilla. Um, and then, you know, that's pretty much it. That's kind of just going over what Percival's whole thing is. Builds your board, helps you get hand, calls out a pretty good key card, and you could you could have done that every single turn every time you saw Percival, so getting a bunch of Excel markers makes bolts really good, but kind of slows them down now. However, Gurgit got buffed because of this thing, because now Gurgit is unrestricted with Percival, meaning you can now play the one copy of Percival in your Gurgit deck, which makes Gurgit way stronger. So Gurgit gets power for every Excel marker you have and gives every unit called by a card ability power for each Excel marker. And that's exactly what Percival does, generates you Excel markers. Even though you can only do it once, that extra 5k to all those things you're calling, especially from Gurgit's own skill to all two things from the deck, those are also getting 5k per marker you have. 
Percival is just adding an extra marker to that list. And Gurkha was doing okay, not anywhere super competitive, maybe like a tier two level, um, which is pretty decent without Percival. So now with Luard hit and Bermuda is kind of hit, um, Gurkha might be coming back, but we'll see. I don't know if it's, it's a little, Un we're unsure to say what's going to happen here, but so far, it looks like pretty healthy choices for a ban list. Uh, this, just what we have here, this is just what Japan got, and we got this including Luard and Bermuda Triangle. So I think that's really cool, and that's going to be fun to see in Springfest as well. So another thing I wanted to bring up is that there are a few other Bermuda Triangle cards that people were thinking needed to have some attention paid to, and I thought I'd just talk about it real quick. So first is top idle aqua. Um, if it's placed on van or rear, you uh, return up to one of the other normal units to your hand, and then you draw a card, then discard. So I feel like maybe this is just kind of like going with the whole thing with meep, where you just call this, bounce meep, then you call meep again, do it again. So that could be an issue, I could see that, but meep being at one means it's probably not gonna be that big of a deal. Um, and you could only use the effect of aqua once per turn. Second skill is if you have another unit the same call as it gets 5k, so just a little 15k beat stick. So I could see why just because the fact that this works with Vert, where or no not with Vert, because Vert calls prisms, I believe. Um but is the fact that you can just kind of use this to keep on bouncing and you know doing your little combos here and there. But I feel like I don't know if Aqua and Lizzle really feel like they need to be hit that hard. Um, I'll just talk about Lizella real quick. It's the card that allows you to call it while you're in grade one Vanguard. So it's it can be called as a grade one. One place at the top card of your deck, call it to rear, put in your soul, and you can only use this ability of Lizella once per turn. So Lizella's whole thing is early game and building you that, that board really quickly. Um, so Obviously, this is going to be a staple for a lot of Bermuda Triangle decks just because of the sheer aggressiveness. And then in combination with Aqua, kind of the same thing. So if you have another unit in the same column, 5k, Lizla can help you build that column. Stuff, stuff can happen, but I feel like it's nothing too oppressive. Last thing is obviously Vert. This is like the finisher for uh, Prism. So it's uh, Act, you bind a card, you Soul Blast and bind a card to Prism from your rear drop and it gets an extra drive and then when it attacks you return all your front row to your hand call up to a prison prism uh from your bind zone to rear and if your opponent's at grade three you can call two um to the rear instead of one so filling up your bind zone um multi-attacking getting an extra drive check this kind of all speaks for itself i don't know if because there weren't a lot of like prism support things limited or choice restricted with each other just looking at the fact that rosa is the only thing that's restricted outside of ellie and cutery so i feel like for the most part the prism deck just kind of lost defense for the most part and prism decks aren't even running meep so who's to say i feel like some people were saying that vert basically kind of got little like a like kind of like a slap on the wrist um and luar definitely got like their whole hand taken off because they lost access to Charon, but I think Luard players will find a way. They just, they'll just be more aggressive, I think. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much it for my thoughts and opinions on this ban list. I think this was a really, really great step forward. Um, other than the fact that one of my favorite decks, which was Prominence Core, got nerfed. Um, that's just a personal thing that I have. Other than that, as far as the meta is concerned, I think V Premium is going in the right direction, and this is going to actually be pretty exciting considering that this is effective April 1st, which you can't see here, but behind here it says April 1st. This is when, here, April 1st, 2022 is when it's effective, and Spring Fest for Ontario, or Ontario, California, us, starts April 2nd. So we're literally going to be playing this meta right from the get go as soon as Spring Fest starts. So. It's going to be a lot of fun, and I'm kind of looking forward to it. So that's it for me, and I'll see you all in the next one.
Look at the mask, my boy.